Are you a fan of cooperative games? If you are, stick around because tonight in Run With The Beard, we're reviewing Express Route. Look at this game. Back up. Look at the back up more. Look at this absolute table hog of a game. And I love it. This is Express Route. Express Route is a pick up and deliver cooperative game for one to four players. Yes, that's right. One to four players. You can play it solo and cooperate with yourself. Don't worry, despite its massive table presence and 19 page rulebook, the game is quite simple, elegant, and they provided probably some of the best player aids that I've seen in recent board game history, along with enough of them to give each player one. Take note, all of you other games that only gave one, two, or three for a four, five, six player game. I would like to take just a moment and apologize for the audio. Uh, something happened. Something happened with the, the little Mikey mic here. It, uh, it connected off and on, so please be patient. I just don't really have the time to redo it. I've got other games to review and three children, and I work full time, over 40 hours a week. I like to play board games too. What am I doing with my life? The game takes place in the late 50s. People are buying a lot of stuff via mail, and you're running a shipping company with space aged automated driverless trucks and planes. And it takes place in the 1950s. Okay. The first thing we do is take new orders from Active Callers. Here on the Active Callers, we have one from Orlando, Florida. So we'll go ahead and put that there. And then we look and see where we are on the demand track. We're in the yellow region. So since we're in the yellow region, we add any one from Active Callers replace from the high demand deck. There are two different decks of packages. There's the low demand and then the high demand. The low demand have a value of one, two, or three. These have a value of four five or six so since we're in the yellow we do replace it with one of these and we flip it over and we put it on our active callers list here next we adjust the demand level based on the new packages that package that we put in orlando has a value of five so we move this up five one two three four five uh oh we're getting pretty close to busting but uh notice that lock symbol up there there are a ton of upgrades that you can get throughout the game and you can use some of these upgrades to remove some of those lock symbols therefore buying you a little bit of extra time over there on the demand track and then when you deliver packages, you'll be moving it back down. And you want to keep that in check because if it gets too high, boom, next thing you know, demand gets too high and everyone loses. This is the type of game where the whole table, everyone at the table either wins together or they lose together. Then the next thing we do is reveal the top card in the event deck. What do we have here? Breaking news, increased demand by one. Well, that sucks. So then we have to recreate increased that demand by one getting us even closer. I'm not feeling too confident about this particular game because we have only delivered two packages. Uh, and another thing that you can do is you can optionally spend one of these packages. So it kind of stinks that you get rid of it, but when you toss it and get rid of it, that is how you get some of these upgrades. And they all have a specific, um, specific cost on them like to get this range one here you have to spend a high demand package that had a value of six but then all players can increase their fuel which when you increase your fuel that's pretty sweet because you move up your fuel on one of your vehicles and now that orange streamline shipper mock two can move two spaces per movement instead of just one. And sometimes these events can just be a sunny day and nothing bad happens. Or they that could be horrible things that happen in a city and now you can no longer drive in or out of, say, Chicago. Blech. But after revealing the event card and rendering any parts of the board useless or maybe your trucks break down and all the packages inside them are discarded, which is really horrible, is when the real meat and potatoes of the game takes place. Players will start off the game with three batteries, and it's kind of like a way to keep track of your action points, and players will place those batteries on different vehicles to move those vehicles or to load up those vehicles. Often players will start with a value of one on the vehicle's movement and the vehicle's loading abilities, 
but throughout the game players can upgrade those so that way they can move the vans more than just one space per activation. Same thing with the loading the vehicles. Typically you can only spend a load action to load one item into a truck or unload one item into a truck, but we'll go over that a little bit more in just a moment. Players at the beginning of the game will also select their specialists from quite a large catalog of specialists, which adds a good amount of variety to the game. These specialists will give each player a special ability that they can do throughout the game, and typically a special perk or uh, asymmetric starting position, a lot of times with their vehicle's ranges or the vehicle's loads that they can carry. And the whole goal of the game is to simply deliver eight packages. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Well, it's not, and I have lost this game more times than I care to admit. The first four packages that the players have to deliver, there's really no requirements to them other than each package has a place of origin and its final destination. So obviously when it comes out on the board, it goes to its place of origin and you need to pick it up and deliver it to its destination. Simple enough. But when you get to delivering your fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth package, there will often be special demands. For instance, here on this particular game, we had to deliver packages that had odd demand values. And then after that, then they had to be in the central region. And the game does come with a whole bunch of these so you can mix it up and it adds quite a bit of replay value. These different scenarios that will dictate how you play the game. And speaking of scenarios, the rulebook does come with a whole bunch of custom scenarios to test your logistical abilities once you get familiar with the base game. So here are some of the actions that you can take. So here I have this orange vehicle so I can spend one of my batteries boop, on the movement action to move him two spaces. So we can go one, two. Now over here, we have these cards that represent the storage on these vehicles. In this one here, we do have a package going to Kansas City, Missouri. What are the odds? Because we happen to be in Kansas City, Missouri. So that's awesome. So now I can spend one of these batteries here to boop, to unload that vehicle. So now we would just simply take this and now it goes up here on the delivered, the delivered deliveries track. One step closer, two down, only six to go. We're not gonna make it. Planes, they don't really have an adjustable range. They just have a range of one. How the planes move, when you place the battery on their space, they move from any one airport to any other space with an airport symbol so they can fly around the map quite quickly uh, and then you can use the vans or the the trucks to meet them in their places and then do the fine touches on delivering the packages so in short take orders from active callers place them on the map adjust the demand track accordingly reveal the top event deck and then move your trucks around picking up packages dropping them off at the right places get eight packages delivered and win as a group and it's not really that easy. It's way, it's so hard. It, it's really hard. But that's a good thing though, because you don't want it to be too easy because then you just breeze through it. And that is Express Route in a nutshell. I'm always skeptical when it comes to co-op games. When I first played Pandemic, I wasn't really a fan of it uh, and just kind of shied away from some solo or cooperative games. However, when I first played Flashpoint, that was kind of the, the game that changed my mind on that. And this game is a stellar cooperative game. Um, it's, it actually is really fun solo as well. I will say though, um, I could see, I didn't experience this though, I could see this game maybe being prone to maybe an alpha gamer trying to quarterback the whole thing. Um, I haven't ran into that, but I could say maybe be aware of who you're playing it with because it is a lot of fun when everyone sits around the table and works together as a group on this, but you don't want that one person kind of quarterbacking it. Um, but it is a very, very excellent game. And the components are phenomenal. All the wooden pieces, they're nice, chunky, screen printed on both sides. They're very nice. The card quality is fine. Um, the art, I dig the art style that they went uh, for on this. It's kind of like a, a futuristic, but back in the 50s aesthetic that they got going on. Uh, I will say that there is one particular picture of one of the specialists that is kind of bizarre. It just kind of stuff that nightmares are made out of. Um, but yeah, the components are great. The art is great too. And I feel like uh, you kind of need to take a closer look at the game to really be able to appreciate the whole overall aesthetic of it. But gameplay is fast and simple that 
player sheet. Um, that player aid makes teaching the game a breeze. It's just a lot of fun, and it's a nice little puzzle that you can set down with a loved one and figure out. And it's not easy. It's quite difficult. But that's a good thing, though, because you don't want a cooperative game like this to be too easy. But once you get the ropes of the basics of the game, in the back of the rulebook, it does come with a whole list of different scenarios that you can work out. I think there's like about 20 of them. And it's pretty neat. It'll change like what event cards you put in the event deck and what specialist you're allowed to use and, and what some of the special requirements are gonna be at the top of the board for your fifth through eighth package delivered so it adds some nice variety to the game and since it is so tough it is a great sense of accomplishment you know when you do finally deliver that eighth package and there's a good amount of strategy too because you know you start delivering the packages but you can also spend one of those packages that you've delivered to upgrade you know your movement or upgrade your storage capacity on you know your different vehicles there's there's just a lot to think about and then you're kind of spinning plates moving a lot of things around you know or maybe you need to upgrade that demand track so that way you can go higher up on the demand track without busting which is very easy to do especially when you get in that red zone and you start adding the high demand packages with a uh, with a demand value of four or five or six I mean you get a couple bad draws out of there next thing you know you, you might be busting on the demand track but overall it's a fantastic fun quick little well I won't say quick it's it's I would say about 45 to 60 minutes I would say well it depends if you lose, it could be as short as 30 minutes, but if you win, it could be maybe a little over an hour. Anyways, it's an enjoyable experience. The game looks fantastic. It's definitely staying in the Beards collection, and it is definitely one of my favorite cooperative games. I would put it up there with like Marvel United or Flashpoint, far better than Pandemic. So if you like Pandemic, I don't see why you wouldn't absolutely adore this game. So anyways, definitely staying in the Beards collection. Check it out. It's a new one from the op who has been coming out with a lot of really good games. Um, check out The Perfect Wave, that mwah, chef's kiss, excellent game. Anyways, if you found this episode entertaining or informative, please consider clicking that subscribe button and notification bell and leave a comment down below on any particular games you wanna see me cover next. Anyways, thanks for watching another episode of Rolling With The Beard, and I hope it grabbed the audio.